Today's show is sponsored by a former guest, the FinTech Group, and their solution for cannabis online companies and dispensaries to accept cashless payments. If you own a cannabis dispensary or a cannabis online business, you know that banking laws make it impossible for you to accept any form of payment other than cash. The FinTech Group finally provides an option that was previously not available. To learn more, go to fintechmerchantaccounts.com forward slash marijuana hyphen dispensaries. We're listening to Raising Cannabis Capital, episode 55. Up to today, we have a combination of self-funding and the revenue generated from the marketplace. But with the milestones in our roadmap, we would like to make 2 million using the Y Combinator safe mode to a 5 million round. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. I'm Dan Humiston, and on today's show, how this hemp marketplace first mover is morphing into a virtual hemp mall for the entire hemp community to shop and interact. Today on Raising Cannabis Capital, we are joined by Zev Pace and Joheem Lowe from Hemp Marketplace. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for having us. Well, this is exciting. I've been on your website and there's so much to talk about, but I think what I'd like to do is the hemp industry is on fire and like any new industry, there's not a lot of inf- infrastructure for doing safe and confident business. I think a Hemp Marketplace is helping to correct this. From reading what I've read on the website is you bring in buyers and sellers from around the world and you're giving them a safe place to do business. It's, you know, it seems so logical. But I guess to start off with, maybe we need to explain some of the challenges that hemp buyers and sellers face. As most of your listeners know, hemp was not able to be grown legally until 2014. So this is an extremely new industry. You know, we're going into the fifth, sixth year, depending on where you are. So at the very beginning, nobody knew anything and certainly didn't know anyone. So there was no way for people to who were growing hemp to know who would possibly buy it. And that's what caused us to start this and say, hey, let's provide a place for farmers to be able to put the word out about what they're growing and then let buyers contact them directly. Totally novel idea. It really took off. And now we're two years later and it's way beyond just farmers. Yeah, I, I can see what you're saying is no one knew anyone. Like you live in Kentucky, that was one of the early states, and you have a crop and there's a, a customer that lives in Colorado, but they don't know each other and they don't know how to get in touch with each other. And that's what the hemp marketplace does. It, it seems so obvious now, but it, it really wasn't obvious at the time, was it? So I kind of draw the analogy like it's the Wild West. People were fragmented across not just the U.S., but the world. The industry was disorganized because it was not regulated for many, many years. So I think the industry needs a best practice or established process. And I think the gist of it is that's what we're bringing. We're bringing order to the marketplace. I like the way you say that. I think you're right. I think you bring order and it makes it more understandable. Well, there are so many things that we could talk about with your business and important aspects that we really should do a deep dive, but because the show is so short, I guess maybe give our listeners a brief overview of how the hemp marketplace works and why buyers and sellers feel so confident doing business on the platform. So to reiterate, the hemp marketplace brings order to the hemp industry. And how we do that is we create an integrated platform. And the platform is not just connecting buyers and sellers, but we created a community that basically allows buyers, sellers, from farmers, processors to consumers to have one place to exchange, to share information, and to do business. So our platform starts with a community at its core, but we build extensible architecture to allow services to be added on top. The services that we want to continue to develop is not just to market and to list, but also eventually to transact to advertise, to find each other, eventually a mall, so that you can do all of what you need to do in one platform and be able to find each other in one platform. 
You know, I read that, the mall part, and I was going to ask you, I have that in my notes to ask you about that, but it, it makes perfect sense. You go to the mall, you buy a pair of shoes, get an ice cream cone, <laughs> everything in one place. And that's what this is like. And when you go to the mall, you need to not just find the products, but you also need to find information and knowledge about the product and the people. When you create your profile, you build your profile, that's when people start to know who you are. And it also keeps the processes safe. Like, okay, this is a trusted person. This is not a trusted person. So in a way, we have the community regulate each other. Yeah, it's like the community polices itself, which is... We do spend, I certainly I spend a fair amount of time uh, every time there is a listing of going through and vetting them and making sure that they've really gotten everything completely done, that they've got links that are accurate, that are real. I sometimes even go to their website and test it out and see how it works. I'll call them. We really try to do our best to see that everyone is totally transparent and that what they're offering does exist and is the way that they say it is. So that's why we have that reviewed mark. When someone puts a listing in, it goes into a pending category where they can still be seen, it's still active, but it does give everyone a chance to know that we're still checking them out. And then once we've reviewed them and, it, and we, we think it's, it's good, then we mark it reviewed and then it goes on to the main part of the site. So we really are building an, a level of safety that doesn't exist anywhere else. We are building the best practices. What is the vetting process? What needs to happen? And we have been learning with the market and putting those safety measures as well. And it will become the vetting process, hopefully for the industry and creating a more regulated industry going forward. I want to take a quick break to thank all of our Raising Cannabis Capital listeners and to remind you that you can support the show by subscribing to MJ Bulls Premium. It's only $4.99 per month, and you gain access to all previous Raising Cannabis Capital episodes, as well as all other MJ Bulls produced podcasts and exclusive content, including companies' investor pitch decks. Go to mjbulls.com and enter promo code RAISING to get your first month free. It's difficult to comprehend the size of the global hemp market right now today, let alone 18 months from now. But one thing is for certain, it's growing like crazy, which means that you guys have to grow like crazy just to keep up. Give us an idea what the next, say, 12 to 18 months look like. We've launched early 2018 and it went on fire. We have quickly became the largest, most active M marketplace in the world today. We have achieved about 2 million page views and 140,000 users and with about 14,000 email lists. But <laughs> what we're, we have a very robust roadmap, and what we want to do is continue to build a strategic B2B business process and services, including better betting and better regulation, but eventually also moving into serving the consumers. So we created the forums and knowledge base to educate the consumers, and also other parties that are interested to play within the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so the roadmap will include, you know, allowing people to be uh, just kind of like a trade show, but like an expo, so a 24-7 expo, so that people, vendors, buyers, processors who are interested have one place to tout their wares 24-7. Wow. Allowing people to advertise and market is one thing. We need to create a better matching algorithm. Just like Match.com have a good matching algorithm for buyers and sellers or, you know, people finding dates. We want to connect interested parties together. So we're going to create a better algorithm and we're going to hone this algorithm to match people that are interested parties. I see. Then once we have these processes laid out for business to business, it is right for us to help business go to consumer. So that's when we will be, uh, the roadmap for the mall platform mm -hmm. will be rolled in. But with all of this said, right, if you notice what we are doing is we're doing it across the board from a lot of parties and services, we are and we will have the first analytics platform that 
cuts across all aspects of the market, from users to products to services, prices and communication. It seems like everything's in place right now, but it's going to be tricky to do all of that out of cash flow. So I know you're raising capital. I've seen your pitch deck. Can you give us, just give us an overview of investment opportunities that you're offering? So, well, currently, up to today, we have a combination of self-funding and the revenue generated from the marketplace. But with the milestones in our roadmap, we would like to make $2 million using the y combinated safe mode to a $5 million round. Okay. Well, we'll also have all of their contact information on the MJ Bulls website, including their pitch deck. Well, guys, I wish we could talk longer. There's so much more to talk about, but I think our listeners got a pretty good overview of what you're doing, and this is really exciting. I appreciate you being on the show. I want to also stress the point that we became successful and able to establish a strong foothold in the market, not just because we are the first mover. Yes, we leverage being the first mover, but we also bring in a unique, deep, experienced team. So Zeph Pace has been in the industry. He was the founder of National Hemp Association. He has deep knowledge in the hemp market for many, many years. And myself and our CTO, Randall Ike, we come from a very strong technology background. Our experience are from Stanford, PlayStation, and Google. So it's a unique combination of expertise. Yeah. Guys, good luck. Thank you. Good luck with this. It was great having you on the show. Look forward to hearing how this thing plays out, and hopefully I can have you back on again. Yeah, look forward to coming back and letting you know. Thanks for listening to Raising Cannabis Capital. To learn more about today's guest or to become a guest, visit our website at mjbulls.com. Today's show was produced by MJ Bulls Media with original music produced in part by Jamie Humiston. I'm Dan Humiston, and you've been listening to the Raising Cannabis Capital Podcast. 